the Baron na his diamond spores apace. Th embroidered king who shows but half his face, and his refulgent queen, with powers combined, a broken troops and easy conquest find. Clubs, diamonds, hearts, and wild disorder seen, with throngs promiscuous strow the level green. Thus, when dispersed a rooted army runs, of Asia's troops and Africa's sable sons, with like confusion different nations fly, of various habit and of various die, the pierced battalions disunited fall, and heaps on heaps one fate o'erwhelms them all. The knave of diamonds tries his wily arts, and wins o' oh shameful chance, the queen of hearts, at this the blood the virgin's cheek forsook, a livid paleness spreads o'er all her look. She sees, and trembles at th approaching ill, just in the jaws of ruin and cuddle, and gnaws oft in some distempered state. On one nice trick depends the general fate. An ace of hearts steps forth, the king unseen, lurked in her hand and mourned his captive queen. He springs to vengeance with an eager pace, and falls like thunder on the prostrate ace. The nymph exulting fills with shouts the sky, the walls, the woods, and long canals reply. O thoughtless mortals, ever blind to fate, too soon dejected and too soon elate, sudden, these honors shall be snatched away, and cursed for ever this victorious day. For lo, the board with cups and spoons is crowned, the berries crackle and the mill turns round. On shining altars of Japan they raise, the silver lamp, the fiery spirits blaze, from silver spots the grateful liquors glide, while China's earth receives the smoking tie. At once they gratify their scent and taste, and frequent cups prolong the rich repast. Straight hover round the fair her airy band, some as he sip the fuming liquor fan, some o'er her lap their careful plumes displayed, trembling and conscious of the rich brocade. Coffee, which makes the politician wise, and see through all things with his half-shut eyes, sent up in vapors to the baron's brain, new stratagems the radiant lock to gain. Ah, cease, rash youth, desist ere tis too late, fear the just gods, and think of Scylla's fate, chung to a bird, and sent to flit in air. She dearly pays for Nissus a injured hair, but when to mischief mortals bend their will, how soon they find fit instruments of ill. Just then, Clarissa drew with tempting grace a 2EDGD weapon from her shining case. So ladies in romance assist their knight, present the spear, and arm him for the fight. He takes the gift with reverence and extends the little engine on his finger's ends. This just behind Belinda's neck he spread, as o'er the fragrant steams she bends her head. Swift to the lock a thousand sprites repair, a thousand wings by turns blow back the hair, and thrice they twitch the diamond in her ear. Thrice she looked back, and thrice the foe drew near. Just in that instant, anxious Ariel sought, the close recesses of the virgin's thought, as on the nosegay in her breast reclined, he watched the ideas rising in her mind. Sudden he viewed, in spite of all her art, an earthly lover lurking at her heart. Amazed, confused, he found his power expert, resigned to fate, and with a sigh retired. The pair now spreads the glittering forefex wide, Tink close the lock, now joins it to divide. Even then, before the fatal engine closed, 
a wretched self to fondly interposed. Fate urged the shears and cut the self in twain, but airy substance soon unites again. The meeting points the sacred hair dissever from the fair head forever and forever. Then flashed the living lightning from her eyes, and screams of oar rend traffrighted skies. Not louder shrieks to pitying heaven are cast, when husbands or when lap dogs breathe their last, or when rich china vessels, fallen from high, and glittering dust and painted fragments lie. Let wreaths of triumph now my temples twine, the victor cry at the glorious prize is mine, while fish in streams or birds delight in air, or in a coach and six the British fair, as long at Atalantis shall be read, or the small pillow grace a lady's bed, while visits shall be paid on solemn days, when numerous wax lights and bright order blaze, while nymphs take treats or assignations give, so long my honor, name and praise shall live. What time would spare from steel receives its date, and monuments like men submit to fate. Steel could the labor of the gods destroy, and strike to dust th imperial towers of Troy. Steel could the works of mortal pride confound, and hew triumphal arches to the ground. What wonder then, fair nymph, thy hairs should feel the conquering force of unresisted steel.